So here's our fourth step. Basically now we're gonna rope the Smarty and we're, again, I hope you see this methodical step-by-step -step that I'm introducing to you. So I'm, I'm riding my horse up into position and we're going about 12 miles an hour. My horse has a nice stride there. I roped, got it on the saddle horn, and I'm simply being patient, staying in position all the way to the other side of the arena, and then that's where I lope my horse out of there. And by, by taking that extra period of time, I've been doing that lately at the schools a lot, it just helps you be develop that much more discipline and patience to not be in such a hurry to get out of there. And it doesn't hurt a thing for your horse to learn to just stay in position. I mean, this would be a great drill to actually fix a horse that was ducking. You ride up into your position, rope the horn sharp, dally, and you just stay there until the horse's stride is nice and smooth. You notice how each one of our horses, it gives our horses time to get set up to go into their handle. And right there you saw, whether it be Tyler's horse or my horse, the first thing that you see go left is our horse's nose. We like our horse's shoulders to follow their nose to the left, like what a barrel racer's horse would do going around a barrel to the left. I mean, it's just, it's just a principle. That's the way God made these horses, is to operate in a real, that's what keeps them framed up and it's so easy for our horses. This is exactly the move that I put on my horse, Helan. Like all my heel horses have always, when we turn them over there and head on them, everybody says, oh my gosh, your horse has such a good move out of there. Switchblade, the horse that I actually sold Jade Corkle that he won the world on, a lot of people made comments on just how nice of a move he had out of there, and it was just simply that I had rode him the same way as I heel on him. And Prince is a, another horse that's a great switch ender horse. He's the brown horse that I'm riding, and he has the same move heading as he does healing. Nose a little bit to the left, and his shoulders just follow. I use my left leg, keep my horse's shoulder up. Pretty soon you establish such a framed up way for your horse to travel that they aren't ever powering up going out of their not dropping their shoulder. There really is an easy way to make our horse work consistent and handle steers good. And that's what this drill is basically doing, is teaching you patience to set your horse up to where his, his head, shoulders, and hips are all lined up and they're in a correct position to where we can just lope out of there and handle the steer and control that steer's um, pattern. These are great shots for you to see that, the drone overhead. And we're loping in the same position that we're actually roping in. And it's amazing how at my schools, it's really hard to get people to see. I want you to just stay in position, the same position that you rope from, because that's, that's where we're gonna actually transition from when we start to handle the steer. Everybody wants to leak back or get wide the minute they rope. So this really teaches you discipline to stay in that position and help your horse to get set up. You're seeing the, the tempo and the rhythm of these horses' strides. I, I can almost think of music when I'm making runs. I mean, there's such a tempo to a good run. And if you guys start getting onto that, there'll almost be an inner tempo that you're, you're looking for with your swing, your delivery, the way you handle a steer. And then you being a header, you're the quarterback. So you're the one that actually can set the tempo up to make it really easy for the heel horse and the healer. I mean, I say that all the time. I'm more of a, because I'm a healer, I'm the receiver. You guys are the quarterbacks. So you have to be a good quarterback and control your horse's move out of there, which is gonna, in turn, control the steer. There's a real domino effect when you do things right. Keep your body posture right, your swing will stay right, your delivery will stay right. You ride your horse framed up, your horse is gonna stay framed up. A good domino effect. But all you have to do is skip one of these steps or violate one of them, and it's a bad domino effect. Then your run just falls apart. And as healers, we're depending on you guys to be very methodical and disciplined to where we can consistently heal four steers for you. You're also seeing, encouraged everybody to, to go several strides as if they're handling that steer really good and then facing. I think it's really good to, to practice the whole run 
at certain times. You don't have to do it every time, but to actually lope along and be able to face your horse without the healer dallying is very important because we're, in a sense, a good face is pivoting the hind end of the horse around the front end, not the other way around. So you have to learn to use your right leg and keep your left hand still so that you can disengage your horse's hip. And then I even like to have the headers, you know, back up a little bit. And that really helps finish our face up. So we'll watch a little bit of footage here and just watch how everybody's working on their staying in position. That's a great shot of that. How good Ashley's concentrating on staying exactly in the same spot. Tell me that's not gonna help herd the rope consistently by really, really showing that horse exactly where we want him to be before we ever go out of there. Ashley did a great job there of pivoting her horse's hind end around her front end, and that, that would have kept the pressure on the steer's head all the way into the face to where the healer would not ever lose a, a leg. When you face the wrong direction, it puts slack in the rope, which causes the steer to pull his leg, and a lot of times, I. I could lose a leg if I rope two feet if you face with your left hand too much and send slack down that rope. So everything about what we're doing is making an application to a live run. So we only have one step after that and that's to go to live cattle. So you can imagine mixing and matching these drills up to where you maybe just take five minutes on the ground, five minutes with the smarty still, five minutes of doing this and then five minutes of roping the Smarty out of the box, that's 20 minutes, and then just move right into live cattle. If you do that every time, you, back, you can actually say that you have a practice program. And you, and you stick with that practice program, you're gonna build such a strong foundation that your confidence is gonna be through the roof. The way you ride your horse, the way your body posture is, the way your swing is, the way you're handling cattle. We're building confidence, we're building muscle memory, we're building patterns that are good patterns, they're good habits that are hard to break. Everybody uses that negative term, you know, bad habits are hard to break. Well, guess what? Good habits are hard to break too. So let, let's establish good habits right off the bat and then they'll be, they'll be very hard to break those good habits. Like once I learned my timing, like swinging over the steers back when the feet are up, I can't not do that now. I mean, I can't swing when the feet are down because I've taught myself to time a steer correctly. It's Once you teach yourself those good habits, you never have to look back. You never have to, there's no regret. So take your time and build your foundation. You'll never be sorry. That's what Smarty Training Program is all about. Training properly at the right speed. Use your speeds here as well. You can tell we're just at a nice slow lope where it's still easy to learn how to kind of breathe through the run, see the run really clear. The slower you go, the more you're actually teaching yourself to see the run stride for stride very clear. If you go too fast too soon, there's gonna be blank spots in your run. So right now, believe it or not, our mental game, we're seeing every stride and we're we're able to do what we need to do every stride of the run, riding our horse correctly. We're seeing everything very clear, including we're seeing our target area very clear instead of that blank spot. So when we transition to live cattle, you have already practiced breathing, relaxing, seeing the run clear. So there's so many things that we're, we're doing good by um, going slow like this. We're building our horsemanship up, our mechanics, and we're building our mental game up. Thank you.